right there we go welcome to say what i mean thanks for tuning in and we have a lot to talk about and unfortunately a lot of these are not good stories you know um it's just the times we're living in and no matter what times you're living in you could always find bad stories but you know in particular right now is it's just something else 2020 been a hell of a year so far and <laughs> it's not getting better it is not getting better at all so what i'm going to do in this video um we have another black man that died in police custody that said that he couldn't breathe also want to talk about drew Brees' ignorant comments um we want to talk about trump and the military you know with him wanting to deploy quote unquote deploy the military um within the united states we're going to talk about a few proposals in congress because that's really my area that's where i really like to break down you have a proposal to have a bonus for going back to work and i also want to talk about universal basic income because there's another proposal i want to kind of compare them so um if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel if you're on youtube um follow me on the say what i mean page on facebook um we we doing a lot of good things you know definitely trying to grow the channel and bring more to y'all definitely have some series that i'm getting into and we're gonna be pumping those out real soon but let's get to it Oh, also, I'm going to be doing um, videos every Tuesday and Thursday, just so y'all know, every Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes Sunday, um, but definitely Tuesday and Thursday every week. So the first story, like I mentioned, another black man who said he couldn't breathe died in custody. This time it was in Tacoma, Washington, and the man name was Manuel Ellis. Now, it's not a lot of information on this story right now um, from what the police is saying that he attacked an officer and threw officer to the ground and it was four officers in, in total that restrained him and cuffed him um, and when he said he couldn't breathe they um, called medical help that's according to them but in the story I read it in the New York Times it said nothing about body cams and that's where I get suspicious. So I don't know if they had body cams, if they had it on or not. But we know, um, this is not breaking news, that police can lie on reports. I mean, we just seen it with the George Floyd situation. They said that he was resisting arrest and they had to do all this stuff. But the video didn't show that. The video showed actually the exact opposite. So... In these situations, we've seen it too many times. We need to see the body cam because the body cam, um, when you see the real footage, oftentimes contradict the official story. So the first thing I want to know with the story, why they didn't even lead with that? Did they have body cams? Did they have it on? I mean, that's what I want to know. But the way the article was written in the New York Times, again, they gave the police every benefit of the doubt. Um, I don't, I always like to just gather all the evidence, but this is beyond suspicious. So if you did all that, how did he die? Another part of the story they mentioned in the article, a, a, a autopsy was done and the autopsy ruled it a homicide. It was ruled a homicide. So yeah, I need some more answers with that in Tacoma, Washington. They say it's a it's an investigation um, underway, so we we'll, we gonna have to monitor this because um, it's unacceptable. If it's for you and you restraining one person, how does he end up dying and saying that he can't breathe? You know, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not getting a lot of traction as of now, but hopefully. We can get this um, get this into the national media. I did see it in CNN today. It was a brief story about that. But it's not really gaining a lot of attention with everything going on. Um, there's so many stories. Like I, if you watch my last video, I mentioned the case in, in Jacksonville where 
um, the black woman, her teeth was knocked out. Um, the the case, another case in Louisville, you know, not only the Breonna Teller case, but uh, was another case in, in Louisville where um, the black barbecue owner was shot during the protest, unarmed. So we have so many cases sometimes these individual cases get lost but each case is important you know because one person that lost their life unjustly is too much it's way too much so we it's hard to keep in order but um one of the things that i want to do is kind of bring back some of these cases that might slip through the cracks and might only get attention for a day you know so that's one of the things that I'm going to put on my plate and part of my responsibilities. Um, moving on, let's talk about Drew Brees and his ignorant comments that he made. Now, this been this made national news. All the sports stations just talk about it, partly because there's not too much else to talk about because there's not a lot of sports going on right now. Um, his comments did not surprise me at all. And what I, what I want to do, because um, let, let's break down what he said. He was asked a question about when the NFL season start. Do he think that um, players will start kneeling again? And this always been my problem with the NFL and the whole Colin Kaepernick situation. They always made it about the flag. They made it about the military when Colin Kaepernick wasn't protesting the military. He wasn't protesting the American flag. He was protesting the unjust killing of unarmed black people. And what Drew Brees did is what a lot of people did at the time when Colin Kaepernick first started kneeling. He didn't address the main issue. He, did, he didn't mention the unjust killing of black people with his response he went to oh you know I just think the flag should never be disrespected my grandfather served in World War II and all this stuff right and rightfully um, people called him out his own players his own teammates they called him out um, Michael Thomas Michael Jenkins and shout out for them to do, for doing so you know, as many other people have pointed out too. Yes, Drew, your parents served in World War II, but over a million black people, black men served in World War II. And when they came back, they were still treated like second class citizens. We didn't get the GI Bill like the white soldiers that returned. Um, and that hurt us economically. You know, um, after World War II, the uh, white soldiers that came back, they was able to get the GI Bill. They was able to get VA loans. They was able to get house help from the government with housing. Black, black soldiers wasn't able to do that. You know, so it's not the same. And also, he act like everybody in the military have the same view. I'm a veteran myself. I was active duty military for six years. I had no problem with the kneeling I had no problem with the protest because as a black man I know there is a problem with police brutality and us getting profiled so he just ignore countless veterans that don't have a problem with Kaepernick protests you know and don't and never comment on the original reason why he was protested this is why he's getting so much blowback and he made a statement apologizing, but it was whatever. It, it, it is whatever. Like, you let you already let us know how you really feel. So for that apology, do you even know what you apologize it for? You know, um, if you read his apology, it's something like, oh, um, you know, I never meant to offend anybody, but you need to educate yourself. If you really want to apologize, read some history and educate yourself. But I, I highly doubt if he does that. You know, I don't think he want to know. I think a lot of people 
like Drew Brees have a certain worldview and they don't want anything challenging that because if you grow up you get taught American exceptionalism a great book to read if you haven't checked this out is lies my teachers told me and it breaks down it breaks now um, how the history textbooks for the time we in school give children a certain perspective and not really making them think and it's like good guy bad guy anything that make America look America look bad they kind of skim over it so that's a great book I recommend y'all reading if y'all haven't checked it out it's an audio book to that too so if you don't want to actually read the higher copy get the audio book it's definitely a book worth checking out um, it was written I believe in the 90s but it's still relevant to this day and because of our upbringing and how um, so many children and so many um, especially white children I would say sometimes is indoctrinated into the certain worldview they don't want to have it challenged and even if it's right in front of their face I think it hurts them that things is not the way that they thought it was when they was growing up so I think it's purposeful ignorance you know um but that's that's all I, I gotta say about that I don't really have any confidence in the NFL I'm not looking forward to the NFL to do anything um and it just is what it is with them so moving on speaking of the military Trump in the military I want to be real brief about this right and people are rightfully freaking out with Trump saying that he was going to deploy active duty military troops in the continental United States to deal with protesters outrageous outrageous you know um, he want to violate the first amendment he don't care about the constitution but my thing is this for those of you who are shocked I'm not shocked why are people still shocked with anything that Trump do um, he he made it clear since twenty, since twenty sixteen, actually before that, that he doesn't care about rule of law. He doesn't care about any norms. He don't care about cheating. He don't care about anything but getting his objective accomplished. You know, um, so why would he care about that? He doesn't care. You know, he says whatever pops in his mind or whatever he see on Fox News or or some conservative outlet that's what he does so anything he says doesn't surprise me Um, is it problematic oh it's highly problematic highly problematic I mean it it, it, it's ridiculous you want to send after duty military on protesters now I know we see a lot of looting and um, riots on TV but the vast majority of protests have been peaceful, you know. Um, of course, when you have an incident like that, like um, what happened with George Floyd, and you have large groups of protests, there's always going to be um, that element in it, you know. Especially protests that's been going on as long as this one has been over a week. I mean, it it happens, you know. But that's that's not what all protesters are doing, and You know, and like I said before, that's not where my main focus is. I don't, that's, I don't, you know, condone looting. I don't condone rioting, but I have more of a problem with police brutality because these are the people that are supposed to be held to a higher standard, right? If you, a person in uniform, I expect better from you. You're not expecting somebody that is that the public have trust in to do these violations. And also, um, with regular citizens, because it's all these talking points, well, you know, if a regular black person kill another black person, um, it's not this uproar. Well, first of all, there's plenty of groups and there's plenty of individuals that address that in, um in cities and neighborhoods all across the country that's number one number two if a black person killed another black person 
most of the time they get arrested and thrown in jail if they are caught on camera you know the problem with police brutality is all the evidence is there you could be on camera and justice is not served that is the problem I don't think anybody will have a problem with um, a civ- a, if a civilian kill another civilian well, nobody's having a problem with that person that killed the other person going to jail you know I know I said that kind of I, I know I said that was kind of congested but y'all know what I mean you know who is sticking up for people that just kill other people you know but when law enforcement do it you have people defending it no it should be the same rules you know um, we understand you have a difficult job but you know that's why you want to do it right because it is a difficult job you are putting your life at risk I understand that but you can't be above the law you know um, or you shouldn't be because right now they are because there's been no punishment there's been no accountability for the police officers that don't do what they're supposed to do you know and it's just a sad situation overall but Trump not surprised and hopefully we won't have to deal with Trump too much longer you know um, I don't like Joe Biden at all um, not even a little bit but unfortunately um, I am going to vote for him in November because Trump is just that bad I mean the competence is unreal it's off the charts how incompetent Trump is you know but it, I really wish I didn't have to vote for Biden because Biden record is terrible but he is better than Trump from judges just from or just handling a crisis like this um, Biden would be better than Trump in these type of situations um, at least I can count on Biden not deploying not threatening to deploy the active duty military on protesters you know I, I'm fairly sure he wouldn't do that at a minimum um, I'm fairly sure he would have responded to COVID-19 better so for those reasons and how important judges are because you know cases a lot of these cases go to you know the three federal courts right if you have Trump appointing all these radical judges which he have he didn't point it about what close to 200 judges um, radical right-wing judges if you have a case to go to you know the course of court of appeals or you know we get like some major legislation passed and conservative groups challenge it and it goes to some of these judges you know the outcome is not looking good and we already got conservative supreme court you know um that's the course is not given enough attention by us um with that said too we still dealing with a uh, health pandemic in COVID-19. I know a lot of that is getting lost right now because of um, everything that's been going on um, with these police protests and protests for George Floyd. But we still dealing with a pandemic. Um, not only, you know, the health risks, um, but we dealing with a bunch of people that lost their jobs. And how are we going to deal with this economically? Because we're about to have an economic crisis. You know, um, they talking about maybe 40 percent of small businesses might be done by next year because of this crisis. You have tons of people that lost their jobs. So what are we doing about this there? I want to talk about this Republican proposal. Um, they proposing a back to work bonus and basically individuals will go back once they go back to work they will be able to keep two unemployment checks so basically you are unemployed about 600 a month so basically it's a $1,200 bonus they would get for going back to work and what they saying is supposed to be an off-ramp from public assistance 
with no interruption of their finance because some people um, that got laid off during this pandemic, there's about two thirds of the people are making more money on unemployment than they was making at their regular job. And I know some people is mad at that, but what I think about is salaries are too low. <laughs> you know, salaries are definitely too low. Um, so they want to basically what the Republicans are doing, they trying to incentivize people to go back to work, um, even if the job they're going back to is making less than is making on unemployment. But I don't think you have to worry about that because in most of these states, if you lost if you got laid off and lost your job, if that company offer you your job back, usually if you don't accept the job, you'll lose your unemployment benefits. You know, I'm, I know it depends on what state you're in, but that's how it works in a lot of these states. So, like, if you got laid off temporarily, you know, and the job call you back. It's like, okay, you can come back to work. If you deny it, you just don't get to keep your unemployment benefits. So, I don't know if this proposal is necessary. And also, um, one of the other reasons why people are making more unemployment is like the type of jobs that lost. Like this was the study was done by the Federal Reserve, right? The federal the Federal Reserve stated that um, almost forty percent of people earning forty thousand dollars or less were laid off during this pandemic, according to the Federal Reserve, and that's. I mean, wow, that's an unbelievable number. Um, and so this whole proposal, I don't know how well thought out this proposal is. And also, I know some people think it would be unfair um, to people that work during the pandemic, um, especially low wage employees that had to work in, in grocery stores and other jobs. And they not getting a bonus. Because there have been talks about um, an essential worker bonus. And, you know, I, I understand that point too. But I think a better idea than an uh, essential worker bonus or... Yeah, I, I don't mind that, actually, especially for grocery store workers, low-wage essential workers. I definitely wouldn't mind that. But um, what I think would be even better than that or a back-to-work bonus is actually... UBI, universal basic income, at least until this pandemic is over. I would like it permanently, but at least until the pandemic is over. I know um, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Merkley um, had a proposal of a UBI of $2,000 a month until the pandemic is over and even after it's, it's over for three months after that. So that's a proposal that's going around in the Senate. They already introduced it. Um, the way it will work, like I said, two thousand dollars a month. If you married and filed joint, it'll be four thousand dollars a month. Um, up to uh, people that um, or individuals uh, that make a hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you make over a hundred thousand, um, it starts to taper off a little bit until you reach a hundred and twenty thousand. Then anything under a hundred twenty thousand. Um, you wouldn't get any type of UBI or stimulus, but um, that proposal is much simpler and better than a back to work bonus, you know. Um, and I think that would be better for the economy and people overall, because you got to remember, I know two thousand dollars seem like a lot, but when you negotiate, you never really start with what you're willing to accept. I know Andrew Yang, because. Um, Andrew Yang was um, part of this proposal too, even though he's not in the Senate, but he supports it, right? If you was paying attention to his presidential campaign, his UBI proposal was $1,000 a month for everyone, right? So this goes to 2000 a month, and you know you negotiate down, you might be able to get to $1,000 a month. But during this pandemic, $2,000 a month seemed like a lot, but it's actually reasonable because that one time $1,200 um, check you know that's not even most people bills for the month 
and you gotta remember I know they're um, they stopped um, it was a moratorium of people getting evicted um, you couldn't evict anybody um, during this COVID crisis however you still have to pay your bills so just because they couldn't evict you from your house doesn't mean you don't have to pay back rent and most people especially um, people that have that was making under 40,000 and like I just said um, 40% of people that was making under $40,000 a year lost their job during COVID how are they gonna be able to pay all this back rent so something like this is needed it is it is needed and we need us we need to be able to talk about multiple things at one time we need to address police reform criminal justice reform and economic justice as well we have to be able to talk about all of this at once like our attention span can't be so short that we can only pay attention to one thing at a time you know there's so many problems that we have um, we can't have a timeout just for one problem you know what I'm saying police and I say this too because just because police brutality wasn't in the news I, I was talking about it all the time people in my circle we stayed talking about it because it's just not a news item because we live it every day you know if you black that you in danger you know you in danger every day so just because the media might not talk about it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist in our lives you know um so that's that's just what i think shout out to you miss baba i see you right there thanks for tuning in definitely when are you gonna jump back in with me miss baba <laughs> that's my former partner right there she's going um one of these days she's going to jump back in it <laughs> but thanks for tuning in you came you came late too you, you came late too i'm about at the end of my podcast too you know late black people i'll tell you I'm not joking but thanks for tuning in make sure y'all subscribe share the video um appreciate the support we, um, like I said, I'm definitely going to be pumping out some series for y'all. Um, I got the presidential series I'm working on. I, um, I am doing the consciousness and comics. And I know I've been lacking in those, but it's been so serious lately and so many serious stories that that's been my main focus. But like I said, you have to be able to do multiple things at one time. So I'm going to be right back at that with y'all this weekend. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for the support. Peace.